Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk about my reading goals for 2018. If you're wondering why I'm already looking forward into next year, when I still have like two weeks left of 2017, I've actually talked about this in a previous video when I talked about my writing goals for the coming year. So I will link that up there or down below. But without further ado, we're just gonna hop into the reading goals. Let's do this. <laughs> In order of semi-importance, my first goal is a new one. It is my main goal for the year, and that is to write a review for every single book that I read. I don't currently do this, like, at all. <laughs> at all. I'm somewhat ashamed, but it's okay. I'm gonna fix it. I'm fixing it for next year, see? So, no more shame. <laughs> shame, shame, shame. I talk about books on this channel all the time, but I don't often actually leave reviews for people not on Goodreads or Amazon or Barnes and Noble or anything. And that's because I, mm, mm. <laughs> On my blog, I did a couple like really in-depth reviews. I had a whole system set up and I absolutely loved it. I'd done three or four of them, I think. And then I saw a discussion on the YA writer subreddit because I want to be a published author someday. And I thought it was really interesting. So I posed a question to them in one of their open discussion forum days. And basically publishing is a really small world. And even though all of my reviews were largely positive because I just personally don't continue reading books if I don't like them, therefore I feel like I can't actually leave a review for them. So my dream one of these days is to be like a writer with these people, also a published author and working in the same genre potentially. And it's just, it's a tricky situation to use your own personal full name or your writer name to leave a review on other people's works. And I know there's, that's an interesting thing about booktube too, which is an entirely different discussion <laughs> for another day, but about how a lot of booktubers want to be writers and kind of a sticky situation you might get into if you're kind of bashing on certain books. And so, ooh. So even though my reviews were really positive, I took all of that in at the time to be like, maybe just stop reviewing the books this way. Just don't do it. But then, <sighs> this is a whole circling around reason. But then I've also been on like a self-implemented book buying ban just because I was buying way too many books and not reading any of the books that I actually owned. So there was something about like buying them. They just kind of ended up sitting there that I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. The problem with that though is that I'll read a lot of books from the library or I will sometimes still buy secondhand books and it just it feels like my money and my support isn't going to the author in that way. And I do know that there is ways that the library is able to count and give numbers back to the publishing house for how often a book is checked out. And secondhand bookstores, I recognize, did already get the money to the author in the first place, but it feels, it feels like nothing I'm doing. Nothing I'm doing is helping these authors or saying how much I love the book other than word of mouth and booktube, which are great, but you know what would be even better? Writing a freaking review. <laughs> leaving five stars, leaving four stars, giving a very, very quick explanation. And so this year, that's my goal. I'm going to do it for every book that I read. I'm just not going to do it under my writer name. And I know other people have totally different opinions on this. So if you are one of those people who has a totally different opinion on this, let's talk. <laughs> But now let's get to the numbers. So for goal number two, I want to read 50 books in 2018. That's the same goal that I set for 2017, which, spoiler. I got close to but did not accomplish. But I still think it's a great goal to shoot for because that's ish a book a week a little bit under in case I have a crazy week and in 2018 I'm gonna freaking get it. Mark my words. <laughs> Ugh, maybe don't. <laughs> And then goal number three is similar to something that I did this previous year, which is that I want 40 of the 50 books to be ones that I already own. I have so many books on my bookshelves that I have not read. So many. So, so, so many. And it's not like they're books that I don't think I'm ever going to get to because I have purged recently and the number of books that I own, if I thought I wasn't ever going to read them, I went ahead and donated them to the library. But no, there's still so many. Goal number four is that of those 10 books that I don't own, I would like five. For now, just five to be indie published works or self-published works. And I, ugh, okay, another thing I'm slightly uncomfortable with. <laughs> I don't really read indie or self-published books, which is crazy because I have a lot of friends who do that kind of thing. And I mean, I guess I've read their books, but other than that, I really don't read indie or self-published books, which seems honestly like I'm cutting myself off from such a hugely wonderful world of creativity. And that just seems a little bit silly. And so, yeah, I would like to make a conscious effort this coming year to actually read more indie published books. So 
I'm setting the goal low at five, but I'm actually hoping I will exceed that. Goal number five is to finish the Harry Potter series in Spanish. I will link up above or down below, just or where. <laughs> the video that I made about this and I'm going to finish the second book basically by the time that the year is done. So that leaves me five more books to read in 2018 and I, I think that's doable. I think I got that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how much easier it is to read the seventh book from the first. This whole experiment is just so cool. My sixth goal is similar to a goal that I had last year, which is to read more classics. And classics are classics for a reason and that's because they're freaking good. <laughs> just five of them just five classics. Again, I'm hoping to exceed that number, but I do have a couple specifically that I really want to get to in 2018. Slaughterhouse-Five, The Count of Monte Cristo, and The War of the Worlds. Those are three that I just, mm, they're really high up on my TBR and I would just love to get to them by the year's end. Honestly, I'd love to get to them by like February because I want them now. My other two goals are also goals that I'm carrying over from last year, which is that I would like to find a new manga series to be obsessed with. I didn't do as well at this this past year as I thought. I will talk more about that in my 2017 wrap up of my reading and writing goals. But yeah, I didn't do it and I would really like to. So if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear about them. And the other carryover is that I want to read a book in every single genre every single one because I do notice a pattern within myself which I think I've actually broken this year and again I will talk about this more in the next video <laughs> which is just that I ha had tended at first to stick to a certain genre which seems again like I'm limiting myself and I can't grow as a reader or a writer if I don't read a little bit more broadly and how can you say that you don't like something if you don't even try it? So breaking all of this down into numbers for my total amount of books what a successful year what a successful 2018 would look like is 50 books read 50 reviews left and 40 of those books being from my shelves. Of the books that I will purchase or will not be from my shelves five of the Harry Potter books in Spanish and then five indie books. Of the 40 that I own, five will be classics, ten will be across all genres, and one will be a manga series that I, I have several that I have on my shelves that I have one or two books of the start at. And so yeah, I'm going to reread those and see which one potentially I would like to read more of. Or again, if you have suggestions, help a girl out. <laughs> This leaves me like 24 books, depending on how you want to count the manga series, to be whatever I freaking want them to be. That's like half of the books, which is awesome. <laughs> that means I can read a whole bunch of nonfiction, which I like to do a whole bunch of YA and a whole bunch of fantasy and chiclet. And those are my favorite genres to read. And so I didn't even bother setting up a specific goal for those because I default to them. So that's really it's no problem. <laughs> okay, so after a whole bunch of numbers, those are my goals for 2018. But I want to know if y'all have any reading goals for 2018. Do you break them down into a specific number that you would like to read? Or do you just have a general goal like reading more broadly or reading across multiple genres or... Comment down below and let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna get to reading and I will see y'all very soon with a new video. Bye.